Sounds good to me. Hello, welcome to the final match preview of the season. Um, so also travel to London to take on AFC Wimbledon for the final game of the 2023-24 campaign. Um, but before going any further, as you can already tell, I'm pleased to say I'm making his first and last appearance on the channel this season. I'm pleased to say that I've been joined by um, AFC, Wimbledon, AFC Wimbledon fan Tom Lodge, who is, of course, an AFC Wimbledon fan. He was kindly agreed to come on and give his thoughts ahead of this Saturday's final game in League 2 this campaign. Um, so firstly, Tom, I really do appreciate your time, mate. I really, really do. Um, but before we go any further in this week's match preview, um, I just want to talk about the fact that how, how quick this season has come and gone, really. Because I think, if you think about it, I was talking to a few of the lads that was at the game last Saturday at Warsaw um, against Bradford. I think we was all talking about the fact that how quick the season has gone. It only feels like yesterday since Warsaw um, and I have to and then took on uh, their, obviously, uh, first game this season. It feels like yesterday since you know the season started. So, how fast and how quick this season has gone is beyond me. Um, but I think for a neutral fan, I think this season has probably been a season of ups and downs, really, for both sides. For Walsall in particular, I think at the start of the season, it was one of which that looked to be one of them doom and gloom seasons again, where um, it wasn't going to be any different to what the last few seasons have been in League 2 for Walsall. Very, very disappointing. But how the season has been flipped since January for Walsall um, has been a totally different equation. And for yourselves, it's been um, a good season up until the last few weeks in terms of, you know, you've been up in there um, in the top half of the tower during the whole season, really, up until the last few weeks. So, you know, you could argue that the last few weeks, is both sides this season have been really disappointing. Um, but Tom, going into Saturday's game, obviously it's the final game of the season. Hopefully, we're not in front of them. One of them typical League Two games where both sides don't really create too many chances. Hopefully, we are in for some goals on the weekend. Absolutely, um, pleasure to be here first of all. But yeah, hoping hoping it's not going to be the usual last game of the season where no one's got anything to play for and. A little bit of a run out of the legs and you get boring game. You know, it's always best when there's something on the line. Uh, it could have been almost um, looked like it was going to be us us two fighting for the last playoff spot. But I think those sort of that we, we obviously derailed our, ourselves last Saturday, which was a shame because I think it would have been a nice way to end the season um, with a bit of excitement. But um, but no, yeah, like you said earlier, it's been God, the season has flown by. Obviously, we had Chelsea start the year in the cup and that genuinely feels like it was about three years ago, <laughs> but mm. what a day that was. Um, yeah, and just to echo your comments just about sort of how the season's gone up and down, I think we've definitely had a lot of peaks and troughs this year. Um, obviously, we had a few, we had a really strong start. Um, obviously, that Chelsea game uh, was fantastic. We beat Sutton 3-0 away in the sun. That was a lovely, I'm looking for the, forward to the sun to come back. Um, and yeah, we had some really great moments. Obviously, we had some some low moments as well, losing Ali in, in the January window to... Uh, to Ipswich obviously was a big big part for us uh, and obviously losing Joe Lewis and Ryan Johnson uh, to injuries sort of over the start of the year was was killer for us saw some good players sort of step into the fray Lee Brown's sort of re revolutionized himself as a center back as well as Keith Barmer and John Joe all that's been fantastic um but yeah I think yeah definitely a season up and downs and I can't believe Saturday is the last game yeah 100% mate um and obviously like you said there I think Saturday's game at the start of the season looked to be uh, one of which looked to be a really entertaining game, really, in terms of both sides batting out for the playoffs. But it looks as if it's totally turned on its head, turn on its head really. And um, in terms of uh, a few weeks ago, you know, you think to ourselves, okay, these two Warsaw and Wimbledon looking to both looking to get into the playoffs. But obviously, you guys losing last week, as well as Warsaw, um, proves that both sides, you know, aren't capable of getting there, getting near the uh, top seven this season. Um, so obviously, Saturday's game, like I said, there, it's, it's you know a, a game in which both managers have looked to make a few changes. Warsaw in particular, and we're surprised if we we, uh, we make a few changes in the start eleven as well as yourselves as well. Obviously, Luke, so I think you lost last weekend. I think it was Tramiel. I think it was. Yourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, like, both sides are making quite a fair few changes going into Saturday's game. But like I said, there, uh, hopefully, like like it's been in the last few seasons, really. Warsaw played Doncaster last season, last game of the season. I must admit, it was one of the most boringest, depressing 2 0 victory I think I've ever seen in my life. And I'll never say that in terms of a win. But it was one of them games where you just think to yourself, I can't wait for the season, can't wait for the season to win, really. But hopefully that isn't the case in the weekend. And um, we get two teams going head to head, really, looking to pick up three points. Hopefully we'll see some goals as well, like we said there. Um, so hopefully Saturday's game, we are in for a good one. But I just wanted to talk about uh, Wimbledon's season, really, as a whole time. Because obviously, like I said there, it's been flipped on its head really in terms of you guys have been pretty much near the top seven all season round really until the last few weeks but talk to me about Wimbledon's season as a whole and what's gone wrong in these last few weeks and what's caused yourself to drop off um, at this late on in the season in terms of making that late push for the playoffs 
Yeah, no, I think I think you know if you compare it to last year, it's a dramatic success because obviously we finished twenty first. But um, this year, I think we've played some good football at times. Uh, I think we've struggled a little bit with having a two man midfield. Um, I think Jake Reeves and I are probably very knackered. I think those boys, uh, for much of a football cliche, cover every gra- blade of grass on the pitch when they play, and you know their their effort is unmatched. So, and that was a real big key factor for us start of the year. The fact we had probably one of the best energy ha- uh, and powerhouses sort of in the middle of the pitch. Those boys just get running and running, and that was a big part of our game. Losing Ali, um, we used to press from the front. There's quite, there's loads of stats um, on how we used to win the ball back in the final third and and really dominate that. Uh, losing Ali, we sort of lost a bit of that intensity. We've, we've we've welcomed Josh Kelly in. Took him a while to get off the, onto the score sheet, but he's off the mark now and and took two really really nicely well taken goals on Saturday. So that was probably one of very very few positives on uh, on Saturday against Tranmere. Um, but no, I think yeah, I think it just might have been a sort of a, a case of running that steam just a bit too early. Um, like Jake Reeves and mine have picked up injuries over the year as well. That's uh, probably due down to, to just the amount of minutes they're playing because they are just that good together. Um, losing Ali, a big factor. And then the, you know, the, I think our starting back line um, that played against you sort of earlier on the season, the reverse fixture had Johnson, Ryan Johnson and Joe Lewis. And, and those two were such a mainstay in our team. And then when they both got injured at the same time for, you know, I think it was six and four weeks respectively, that was a, a huge blow for us. And I think it really knocked us out of our scene because it's changed shape uh, and it sort of restricted what we had been doing. Um, so, yeah, probably losing Ali, uh, running that steam and also some injuries that, that didn't help. Yeah, 100%, mate. And obviously, uh, going back to that game earlier on in the season, I think you guys, but it was 3 1, I think it was, at the Payne yeah. Stadium. Uh, I must admit, I think, I, I still stand by my way to that. I think you guys were definitely one of the best sides I've seen this season in terms of you know, attacking wise. I definitely do think you guys were very, very good and played Warsaw off the park on the day as well. Warsaw couldn't really get near Wimbledon on the day uh, earlier on in the season. But obviously, like you said on a couple of occasions, I think it was Al Hamadi. Al Hamadi, yeah, yeah. Sorry if I pronounced his name wrong there. I think it's a you know a hard work name to pronounce. But um, obviously losing him in January, I think it was January you lost him there. Beach. Obviously yeah. you should play for yourselves. Obviously scored a fair few goals for yourselves this season as well as last season. I think he did as well. So obviously losing him in January was a huge loss for yourselves. And could you argue that since losing him in January was obviously a, you know a, a cause in which struggled to get the players this season due to the loss of him in January? Yeah, I think with him, with his goals, he created stuff on his own. Um, he was a fantastic player. He worked hard, got goals and could finish. Sort of made things work himself. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't say for certain, but I'm pretty sure it would have given us a much better chance of getting into that top seven. Um, yeah, he was a fantastic player. And also looking at that squad, we had uh, Connor Lemonhay Evans as well. He went back to Stockport. We sort of raided Stockport in the summer um, to <laughs> brought in three of their players. Obviously, in Joe Lewis, Ryan Johnson and, and Connor Lemonhay Evans. And um, the latter there, he was fantastic. And he's a player we were really sad to lose. Um, him and Joe Lewis were on loan. Um, we managed to purchase Joe Lewis uh, permanently, which was such a landmark signing for the club. Uh, it was a real statement of intent from us. Uh, unfortunately, Connor Lemonhay Evans, we, I don't think we had the budget for when he went back. But... He gave us the option he could play out wide, he could play in the middle when we played a diamond and he really made that diamond tick. Um, and probably, I think, the reason we can't play that diamond now is because he's gone. Uh, and yeah, again, him and Ali were just fantastic on their day. I mean, even off their day, they were still pretty decent. Um, yeah, Ali, Ali, I think he didn't score for the first 10 games of the season and ended up with 15 goals. You know, that's not a bad going for, for half a season in League Two. No, not at all, mate, not at all. And obviously, any player in, in this day and age that goes from playing in League Two to the Championship has to be good. And it's not any old championship club, it's a championship club in which you're fighting to get in the Premier League and it's which turn obviously doing a really having a really good season in the championship. Mm-hmm. So like I say any player that goes from League Two to a you know a high table championship side he's got to be good. So hats off to him he's a very, very good player. Uh, and obviously it's a huge loss for yourselves as well in January. But talk to me a bit about um I have to win into manager Johnny Jackson, I think it is. Obviously, he's mm. been with you for a fair few years now. I think it's his second season as manager. For yes. um, so, talk to me about he is as a manager as Harlem. What style of football do you think he looks, you know, what sort of football does he look to implement on the pitch and what sort of football will he play on Saturday against Warsaw? Yeah, I think in games that he uh, that have gone well, I think we've sort of controlled possession quite a bit. Um, I think in terms of a, a real statement, um, style he hasn't got yet we've we've played a lot of different styles this year actually we've had three at the back played five at the back played a diamond and um, we played with, with wingers you know it was really changed all year but i think one thing that seems to to be ever present when we were playing well um was this controlling of possession because i've not really seen a woman team control possession much uh in my unfortunate 21 years of supporting the club um from the day i was born um 
So it was nice, but it's nice to see sort of Jake Reeves on the little sitting with the ball on the edge of the box and dictating play and holding teams in their own half. You know, I think at one point, I remember, I remember watching us having our centre backs in the halfway line, it was that comfortable. And that's that's not something we've ever really had um, watching us play. So that, that's been positive. I think he's still finding his way um, and sort of finding his style of, of play when he's not got players that are injured or missing out or something not going right. So I think we're gonna, we've got a lot more to come from that. And I, I think in the summer, we'll see sort of a, a real, ref, not a re, real refreshment of the squad, but I think we'll see some new faces come in that maybe help him play the way he wants to play again. Uh, we signed, I want to say, 10 players in the in the summer window last year, and they all went straight into the first team and strengthened it. So exciting to see what him and Craig Hope can work on uh, this summer and strengthen the squad. So hopefully, I mean, the target's got to be top three, I think, with a minimum of the playoffs next season. Yeah, it's likewise, mate. Same for us as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, we surprised there's a few, a few changes for Warsaw as well in the summer. I think there'll be a few a uh, few uh, comings and goings in the summer, like you said there for yourselves as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if both sides could be uh, up there and changing again next season, hopefully fingers crossed. And this time next good season, to see. Uh, we we we'll face each other a much more important game than it was, than it's going to be on Saturday. So I just said there are a few changes for both sides in the summer. Uh, but in terms of Johnny Jackson, you know, is there any changes in particular that you know, you 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 could uh, potentially see uh, potentially see made on Saturday against Horse in terms of a start there, not pushing you for trying name and start the eleven. But is there anybody in particular that you could see starting on Saturday for Wimbledon? Oh, um, one thing that, that Johnny Jackson does do is he does pick the same players every week, which has been quite nice to have sort of a a back line that stayed together and sort of going forward. Um, I think I, I mean I, I personally I've got a little bit of a, a campaign because I really like James Ball and he's not had as many minutes this year, so hopefully we'll see him start or get some minutes. Um, I think we might see maybe a couple of the youth come through. I'd like to, I'd like to see Aaron Sassy get more minutes. He's been a real live wire this season. Um, uh, sort of we played against when we played against Wrexham earlier in the year. Wrexham away, I thought he looked really good and he, he created a lot of chances. I think he's only 18, 18, 19. So it'd be good to see him get, get some more minutes. Um, and yeah, I think a couple of our, our, our stronger youth prospects are actually out injured. Morgan Williams, I think, is off out for the rest. Of, well, was at the time when we spoke to him, sort of a few weeks ago, out for the rest of the season. Um, so it'd be nice to see any of the youth lot come through, but also just just the boys to finish on a strong, strong, um, strong way because you know it's been it's been a better season than last. So it'd be nice to have a positive end um, and and something to cheer about as the last game of the season. As much as it would be your to your woe, I'd like us to win. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a relatively unchanged side. Maybe see James Ball come in uh, if any of the, if there's any injuries. Uh, obviously, be Alex Bass is probably last game for the club as much. I think everyone wants to keep him. Um, I, he's on loan from Sunderland. Uh, yeah, on from Sunderland, and he's been fantastic. Like he has been fantastic, and that's been good. And I hope he gets the right send off. Um, and then I think who are other loans have we got in John Kamani Gordon, um, and I think that's it in terms of loans. I want to say. Might be wrong. Don't count me on that. But I should know more. I should know that better. Um, but yeah, Bass, John Kamani Gordon, and I think that's it for Lens. Yeah. So it'd be sad to say goodbye to them. But uh, it'd be, I think it'd be nice to get my Saturdays back. So uh, it'd be a, <laughs> a, good, a good point. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Um, and I haven't actually mentioned this yet because I think I'm, me in particular, I'm talking as if Warsaw season is over. But mathematically, Warsaw season is not actually over in terms of making the playoffs. Obviously, I don't think you've heard yet on that Warsaw season. Uh, we could actually still make the playoffs on Saturday with a win against yourselves. Oh, wow. Was it hoping... hoping other teams lose? Yes. So, hoping that three teams lose. So, mathematically, <laughs> it's still doable. But I think, overall, if you think of it in terms of logic, logically, I don't think it's doable in terms of winning. But Doncaster had nine unbeaten, uh, nine wins in yeah. a row, aren't they? Yeah, yeah exactly. I think so Doncaster not... think that last spot, didn't they? Yeah, 100%, mate. And obviously, the run, the run they're in at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if they go all the way and go and win the playoffs. But, to war for Warsaw to make the playoffs, I've written this down on a post in now here saying Warsaw need to win against Aves Women on Saturday by over four goals, which is there we go. Lost, I, think, I can't <laughs> remember the last time Warsaw scored more than four goals in a game. Uh, we need to hope that Bradford, Crawley, and Barrow all drop points on the weekend, and obviously Warsaw to win and score over four goals. So it's still doable. Um, I think when there's hope, there's always, think... it's always better when there's hope. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate, exactly. Um, so I don't think, in terms of you know looking at that stuff that I've just read out there, you know more than likely Warsaw are not going to make the players. But who knows? We could see an absolute, um, you know, some some absolutely spectacular happen on the weekend. But hope you know most likely it's not going to happen. But bit of VFL magic, you never know. Yeah, exactly, mate. I think uh, if you think about it, two years ago, I think Bristol Rovers got in the playoffs or automatically oh. and they beat Scunthorpe up seven 0 I mean that was absolutely unbelievable. So who knows that could happen for Warsaw on the weekend? Whether it happens. Who knows? So I think but, Elliot Anderson played in that team for Bristol Rovers and he played Champions League football this year for Newcastle. Phenomenal. Man. 
man. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like I say, Saturday's game. I'm obviously, I'm obviously making the trip up to uh, trip up to Wimbledon on the train. So it's my first time to Wimbledon. So you know, I'm looking Fantastic. forward. Fantastic. Yeah, so I think we'll also have taken over 1,000 plus their, their fans on the weekend. So hopefully we are in for a good atmosphere as well. Obviously, you guys have a good home following as well. So as we all know, so hopefully... Yeah, I think it's a sellout, but it was when we um, when we we had something riding on the game. So I feel like some mm. people might not t- turn up if there's nothing to play for. Yeah, but I hope it should be a packed plough lane because you know what? It does get quite loud there, so which has been good. Mm. Um, it's been nice because like it's obviously we're back home at Wimbledon and it's nice to actually have... A stadium that's ours and i think there's a lot of pride in that so it's nice but yeah we're good to hear a thousand of your lot coming up that's amazing it's always nice to hear packs out away and i think mm. um harrogate came up earlier on good friday and it was like 120 of their fans so it's mm. never a good look for an away side but what we yeah. want we want a packed home end packed away end, and uh and some noise hopefully yeah 100 percent, mate i think like you said there i think after saturday's game against bradford i think including myself we all had our tickets booked and since we lost to bradford i think it was five o'clock on saturday we lost i think I mean, is there really any point in going to Wimbledon now? So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of Warsaw fans were turning and says, oh, we're going to sell our tickets now. But um, obviously, I'll get my ticket. I'm still going. Um, so obviously, it's a grand to tick off at the 92 as well. So I'm looking forward to it. And I'll feel going for a good game of football all week, all round on Saturday. So, Tom, I really do appreciate you taking your t- uh, time out to come on this evening's show, mate. I really, really do appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, I, will I will see you on Saturday for the final match action between AFC <laughs> Wimbledon and Warsaw. And hopefully, fingers crossed, Warsaw picks up the three points. And I'm hoping. Uh, you for the same as well for Wimbledon as well, Tom. But on a follow up before going any further, Tom, what is your score prediction for Saturday's game against Warsaw? Score prediction: We've got Alex Bash, the best keeper in the, in the league, so I'm going to clean sheet and Josh Kelly to carry on his form. Three 0 Dons. Mm. No, to be fair, I'm not... say that. Don't want to wish you guys to lose, obviously, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm not feeling too comfy going into Saturday's game. Obviously, like I said earlier, you guys are one of the best sides I've seen this season. Uh, so I'll be surprised if also we struggle on the weekend but hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully we do turn up and give you guys a good game on the weekend hopefully pick up three points as well but Tom like just, uh, like just said uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight's show we really do appreciate it and um, that is it for this season's match preview show the final match preview show is done and dusted and of course stay tuned over the next few weeks the video has been uploaded about talking about the overall season as well as well as talking points on and off the pitch as well so please make sure you do change. stay tuned on the channel during the next few weeks. But Tom, again, appreciate your time, mate. And I'll show you on Saturday for the match traction of AFC one the University's Warsaw. But until then, and as always, up the Saddlers. Cheers, Tom, mate. Really do.